seven years. That, my friends, is a surprising number to me. But why? It's not five or ten or anything beyond, but it is a milestone all the same, and one unlike anything else I've lived through. Every year is a new story I get to put as a chapter of my life, and let me tell you, the last 12 months have been just that. Whether it was the absolute grind of continuing the gaming playthroughs, or the happy moments shared between Minecraft SMPs, every bit of it had a part to play in this new chapter, no matter how hard or exciting it turned out to be. So the moment we passed six years and I released my last anniversary video, I knew 2023 would be a year unlike anything else. And you know what? I was right. So what was that story? What were those memories we made along the way? What brought us to a new year? A new us? And where will the story go next to make our way into the future? Well, I plan to answer exactly that today. And whether this is your first video or your 50th, I'll hope you join us along for the ride. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at seven years of Mittens the Mailbox. Enjoy! As always, if you like this video and want to see more, go down below, drop a like, and slap that subscribe button. I have a bunch of exciting plans for the year as we go along, and you won't want to miss out on them. Also, like my previous years, this isn't my first covering of these events. If you would like to go a little more in depth to what I did over the past year, be sure to check out the Celebrating 200 Followers video, the End of Summer Update, and the 2023 Rewind. They'll be linked down below in the description, and with that, let's get started! As we begin our journey into the land of seven years for this channel, we first need to step back to a few days before the six year anniversary. As it turns out, one of the few things I didn't mention in that video was the start of a new SMP series I was streaming, one called the V Pumpkin SMP. Now, what was the V Pumpkin SMP? Well, in short, it was a server started by Taz the Menace back in October 2022, where I was invited to play on its first season. The name originally came from that season, being a Halloween themed server to last for just the month itself. However, due to support from the group it had created, it would go on to host three more seasons afterwards, for a total of four seasons in all. For today's recap, the season that we're talking about is Season 3, and during the opening of the server I had three goals. Meet new people, try out mods, and build some lasting memories for myself to remember. Those might not seem like big goals to most people, but let me tell you, this cat girl is not very social. Most of what I do ends up being by myself, so this server was a chance to try something new. And thankfully, I was given just that. A chance, and over the first few weeks of the season I met some new faces I had no idea would become some of my best friends. Who were these mysterious companions? Well, you'll probably recognize a few of their names if you've been around since last year. Retrace Your Step, Manicula VT, Captain Sarlo, and Puzzle Child. Though I met all of them through this server, my experience with each of them was completely different, but my strongest connection in-game was the Captain themselves. From the end of March 4th to the next few months, I grew to make an incredible bond with them. We originally had a group of players named the Cool People Club, but Due to time limitations and other obstacles, our base ended up just being the two of us. Together we spent time getting to know each other, slowly making memories as we tried out new mods, explored the player built quest lines, and even worked on building up our base. We transformed an empty landscape with a tall stone pillar into ones with homes, life, and a family. It's a time I look back on fondly, and unbeknownst to me would begin the setup for one of my biggest channel changes to date. But that's for a little bit later. Working alongside the server was the more personal growth I was undergoing, which was my time trying to secure a job. I mentioned this back in the Six Years video, but one of the hardest struggles of the year was researching, being interviewed, and landing a position I could work for, something I could use to build up income. Of course, being the creative-driven feline I am, I spent any time I could working on these channels, but a lot of that energy was hindered by the worries of such a big life goal. This unfortunately meant that starting from now until October, I was stuck worrying about personal security, but a good chunk of that was relieved by May, when I started working at the job I have today. It's given me a lot of freedom in the time since to commission artists, buy games, and even start improving some of my older setups in the recent weeks, which I am forever grateful for. Despite the rough start I had with 2023, landing this job was one of the hurdles I wasn't sure I would make it over, so as May rolled to a close, I was beginning to feel like there was some real hope for the summer. One of 
One of the great things about the summer has always been an increase in productivity for me, as in recent years that would be the time I was off of school and could focus my energy here. However, being out of school for a year now and working on a project behind the scenes, this time ended up being a little different, and if anything, was setting up for changes to come at the end of summer. Thankfully though, that didn't mean nothing went on, so let's go over what all happened in June and July. On the YouTube side of things, I had wondered about a very simple idea. I've been open about my queer identity since 2022, and have been very aware of it since 2020, so why not make a video to express that openly? Despite some nasty computer issues this month that involved me not being able to get into my computer and almost losing everything I owned on it, I was able to bounce back and make a short entry about who I was, my identity, and my support for building a community that can be just as queer as anyone else. Following this in July, I released my next update speed paint combo for the goal of reaching 200 followers. The speed paint goes into detail on what had happened since I hit 100 followers, when I hit 200, and what to look forward to as we wait for 300. Side note, I'm actually really close to that now, so if you'd like to see us reach that goal, be sure to head on over. However, something you might find interesting is that videos like this are one of my inspirations to do more art going forward. If you look at some of my videos over the last few years, you can see other speed paint updates, thumbnails I've drawn myself, and even just experimenting with speed paints by themselves. It's a part of my life that I love to use and explore when I can, and having a chance to talk more laid back without a set script is a nice change. I say, knowing everything I'm saying right now is in a very long script of its own, including this explanation. Now, on the Twitch side of things, these months did not disappoint. On June 28th, 2023, the end of the V Pumpkin SP Season 3 came to a close, and boy was it a meaningful one. Due to those computer issues I mentioned earlier, I wasn't able to stream the ending myself, something I am still salty about to this day. However, Sarla was, and after about two hours of reminiscing, touring, and talking, the server came to a beautiful and wonderful conclusion. To say the server affected my life is an understatement, because even with the time long gone by now, it has given me a path into a future I never could have expected to happen. It is something I will forever be thankful for, and I hope to bring a little justice to that today. After the server had switched over to Season 4 and my PC issues were resolved, I moved back to working on a connection point, and finishing a project I haven't yet talked about. What is the project, you ask? Well, back in January, I set myself a massive goal, to take down and redesign my treehouse space, which had been around since July 2021. I wanted to see how much my skills in building and scale had changed in that time, so I spent the next six months working tirelessly on outlining, designing, and building a new base, the Willow Treehouse. Loosely based on a willow tree and finished on my last stream of July, I had completed the outside entirely, now standing over 70 blocks tall and giving my home a completely different feel to the one it had before. This is one of those projects that I am still proud of to this day, not only in the dedication it took to build something this far out of my comfort zone, but in the patience of finding my own way through this incredible achievement. And yet, finishing this treehouse was the last thing I needed before the reveal, a reveal so big it shaped my channels forever. And so we end up here, right at the end of summer, face first into August. This was no ordinary month this time around, no no. This was one of the biggest channel overhauls I've ever done in the history of my time here. This was the 3D debut stream. Now, how did we get here? Well, it all started back at the end of March from none other than Puzzle, who was the maker of my 3D model itself. As someone who had experienced making their own models, she reached out to ask if she could use Willow to practice very models, which she hadn't done before. They worked on and off throughout the next few months on making a design to suit my style, as well as a cyberpunk outfit on the day of the debut. What you might not know, however, is that without Puzzle's original desire to try designing a 3D furry model, I never would have had my debut in the first place. I had been hoping to change my setup for many months at that point, but still needed a spark to get things started. As I began working on some of my own assets, I was joined in by my wonderful friends Ash Piles, Coley, and Toybox as I worked on getting new screens, alerts, overlays, emotes, and essentially revamping my entire Twitch channel for streams. I would keep quiet about the true intentions behind my words until the debut trailer, where I announced the many months of work that had gone to such a massive overhaul and the date of said debut stream, August 7th. With some technical difficulties in the beginning, the stream went on without a hitch, being one of my favorite streams of all time and a huge personal leap forward in the quality of my streams. It felt amazing to finally have my channel feel like mine in its entirety. I chose and worked on every inch of its process, and I didn't have to do it alone. Of course, the main channel got its updates as well, even getting a new icon and banner to go along with it. 
As I began to stream with my newly debuted style, I spent the month enjoying streams, completing smaller projects in Connection Point, and preparing a new video for the channel, the End of Summer Update. This went into the full details of how I made the debut possible, new video releases, and enjoying the changes coming soon in the wind. Despite coming out a little later than I hoped, it is still one of my favorite videos from last year, and I felt so proud to have accomplished something this big. As August rolled to a close and the fall months kicked in, I used my newfound debut powers to try out a whole bunch of new things, and finally took control of all the changes that had come my way this year. If you remember when I talked about the search for a job, I mentioned that it wasn't until October that I was able to relax and enjoy personal security. Now, if I had already found a job months ago, why October? Well, my dear viewers, I not only was trying to secure a good position to work for, but also was learning how to drive. Oh yes, I spent the first 10 months of the year working towards obtaining my driver's license, which was a huge weight off my shoulders. To be genuine for a moment, getting that license gave me the chance to feel like I had my year back, and wasn't stuck in this never-ending chance for it to be over. It ended up being an incredible boost to my morale, and I was very happy to have it behind me. On the flip side with streaming and videos, I was doing all kinds of crazy things. First up, I had my collab stream with Retrace. We played Rain World together, and though a short stream in my averages, it was incredibly fun and entertaining, and one of my first since 2022, not counting V-Pumpkin. Next up, I finally took that artist's inspiration within and shaped it into a new form of video, the standalone speed paint. Now, I have done these way back in 2021, but decided to discontinue them as the setup was incredibly tedious and time-consumed to do each time I tried. However, since then I've switched to a hybrid style of traditional sketching and digital rendering, allowing me to hone both my skills with pencil and phone together. This new style, mixed with my love for the V-Pumpkin server, allowed me to create the V-Pumpkin speed paint of Sarlo and Willow on her house's ledge. And finally, to follow this up, I passed a follower goal for 250 follows, allowing me to try a new type of stream, Gartic Phone Streams. This was an idea I tested out during the 3D debut stream, and October was our first one as it went off to a roaring success. It has now become a monthly staple of my schedule, and some of the prettiest drawings you'll ever see have popped up out of these streams. Alongside this, Connection Point got some much needed love as well as we raided a bastion, rebuilt the storage room, and expanded the old strip mine tunnel down to the 118 world height. These two months really packed in a lot of the new starts and projects to remember. Now, if you've been around in the last year and have watched this far, you might have noticed a certain lack of videos talked about. If you did, good on you. I've been saving them all up to talk about all at once. This, my friends, is the Hollow Knight series, a playthrough spanning from September 22 to November 2023. Starting from March and consistently over the months after, this was the bulk of my videos released, all following my journey through the game as I could find it. In March, we opened and explored the Royal Waterways and Ancient Basin. In April and May, we delved deep into the Resting Grounds and Deepness, followed in June and July with the Mantis Lord's fight in Finding the First Dreamer. In September and October, we discovered Kingdom's Edge and hosted the special premiere of Episode 20, the unraveling of multiple boss fights and Finding the Second Dreamer. Then, we find ourselves in November. In a month-long three-episode summary to the 16-month series, we opened the Abyss, marked out the Fog Canyon, absorbed the Final Dreamer, and finally defeated the Hollow Knight himself. We ended the series with a 50% completion, and I have never been happier to complete a series as I was with this one. It took way longer than I ever anticipated, but with it over, I've been able to start doing more kinds of videos. With a series like this, it's nice to take breaks and try new things out, and that's exactly what I plan to do. Now that we've gone to the end of the series, I'd like to give a little insight into the background of making these videos. So, in total, there were 23 episodes and 28 streams, and over the course of this time, the episode to stream conversion rate switched up into a few different eras. In September to December 2022, we had episodes 1 through 8, which lined up directly with those streams. Then, in episode 9, I combined streams 10 and 11 to fit in the full Soul Warrior fight. This skewed the next set of episodes to be one short of the full count, and so from February to July of 2022, with episodes 10 through 18, the real stream numbers were 11 through 19. Then something a little weird happened, and I forgot to save stream 20 before it disappeared into the Twitch ether. This made episode 19 two streams behind, being stream 21. And then episode 20? Well, that thing cranked it up even further. Now, what do I mean by that? 
I mean that episode 20 was one of the most ambitious things I made last year, and there is no doubt about it. I combined streams 22, 23, 24, and 25 all into one episode because again, yes, that is how long I spent fighting and failing against Hornet at Kingdom's Edge and then fought and beat the Watcher Knights, which means that the final batch of episodes in November 21 through 23 were actually streams 26 through 28. And that, dear viewers, is the mind game I played trying to keep all of them as aligned as possible before where it fell off the deep end at the end. And finally, I can't forget about the coolest thing, my new PNG tuber. The story behind it actually stems all the way back to August, right near the end of the month as I stumbled across a new streamer, Kane. At the time, their username was Bishonen Prince, so if you've heard me mention that name before, they've since changed it to Graveyard Growls. Very cool. Away from my own streams and videos, my follower experience tends to involve a lot of gaming and art streams. No surprise there. But even with Prince doing it both, it was honestly kind of astonishing how quickly I picked up on him and joined their community. Afterwards, I would commission him for a variety of things, and the biggest thing would be a PNG tuber to replace my old one. Now I could talk about how much I adore them and their art style all day. I really could. But in short, I felt it was time to change it out. The debut inspired me to make changes like this when I wanted to, and the stream where I presented it was an incredible time to enjoy. And now we come to the end of the year, December 2023, a time for wrapping up the chaotic and wild year we had. For me personally, December has become a huge motivator to finish out the year strong, and give it my best effort to give it the warm goodbye it deserves. In 2022, that ended up being a video every week and bidding the Ender Dragon connection point, and this year was no different. With the finale of Hollow Knight in November, I had one more game left to finish off my original trio, the three games Jade had gotten me back in 2022. Stray. After a year and a half of playing the other two, it was finally time for the cat girl to play the cat game, and I released the first two episodes and it turned out to be incredibly fun. In addition to this, I also used December as a testing ground for YouTube Shorts and TikToks, which I had only considered in previous months. Over the course of the month, I would have released six shorts, including an intro to the channel, bugs encountered on stream, and even some cool moments captured. Despite the short length and comparatively small time to make, I didn't end up making as many as I wanted to, but since it was something I had just started, I was pretty proud of accomplishing the ones I had. On the Twitch side, I spent the whole month doing streams I'd been looking forward to making, and boy was I excited. First, I streamed Sayonara Wild Hearts, a game I found through Puzzle in September and was graciously bought by the wonderful In Raven's Week. Love you, Raven. After that, I completed my farm designs and connection point and hosted my three year anniversary stream, rounding it all off by enjoying Christmas Eve and making a new map of my world. And finally, as is a tradition that I wish to continue, I released the 2023 Rewind on New Year's Eve, ending the year once and for all as I spent the night with my family and friends. Despite the year it took to get here and the trial I had to face, this? This was worth it. And thus, with 2023 behind us, a new year, a new chance for us to take, had begun. The new year is always an exciting time for me, and I couldn't be happier as I made my new year's video on schedule this time. As much as I felt the 2023 entry being a couple hours late fitting a little too well perfectly as a sign, I wanted to get back on my 1219 trend from before. Being able to return to it was a breath of fresh air, and it inspired me to make a new year's goal for this year. I want to either A, have succeeded at making these channels a workable job that I can start to live on, or B, give it my best shot in the dark and be proud of my efforts at the end of the year. What is that that look like? Well, I have a few ideas, but I'll save those for the last section. For now, let's talk about what I've done so far. To start, I've been working on continuing the Stray series, with a projected total of 8 episodes and 5 out so far. The first 4 were actually two streams split in half, but during the making of the fifth, I decided to keep it whole. On one hand, it makes them longer, which I was hoping to avoid, but on the other hand, it allows me not to make awkward cuts in the middle to split them up. One interesting thing I've learned from this is splitting streams into multiple episodes, as before I worked with an episode per stream, or occasionally combining multiple into one. Always nice to add more tools into my arsenal for later. And next up, we have the Wintertime Speed Paint. This was an idea I held onto for quite a few weeks as I made other videos and streams, and finally finished the piece to produce it. Taking after the original inspiration of the V-Pumpkin Speed Paint, I decided to test my skills with perspective and layering, making a snow-filled walk through the forest as Will happily enjoys the weather. 
and to follow that up, I made new reference sheets for her. My previous reference for Willow was made back in December 2022, and as the year went on and the 3D debut came to pass, I realized I no longer used her main outfit. In fact, as I was designing her emotes, getting commissions, or passing along the reference to others, I had been specifically avoiding it. Nothing wrong with the outfit, but I felt the same sentiment I had for the debut. It didn't feel like me, and I wanted to change that. So shortly after the speed paint was released, I took a whole week in February to redesign, fix, and split the drawing to something more me. And that's exactly what I did, and this is the end result. And finally came a big change to the channels, one I'd been sitting on for quite a while, raising my age limit from 13 plus to 16 plus. For a long time now, I worked under the banner of 13+, as of course that is what most platforms work at. However, since I celebrated my 20th birthday last November, I began to think about the age difference, and at least for the time being, it's a change I made largely in part for myself. One, to allow more mature conversations if they ever arise, and two, to know that the people I, that watch me are at least closer to my own age. Of course, if you are younger, all the power to you. I'll always be happy to share my little corner of the internet with others, but the Discord server, streams, and the like will be reserved for a little bit of an older audience, so keep that in mind as we go forward. And finally, we're here. March 2024. To think that even in one of the most difficult years of my life, I managed to do all of that? It's a little crazy, and if anything, I want to take what I've learned and do more this time around. But what does this time look like, and what plans do I have? First, let's go over the visible changes I've been making to the channel. To start us off, I have a new Minecraft skin. I commissioned Taz back at the end of February for one based on my VTuber outfit, and lo and behold the absolute Chad came through and crushed any ideas I had for it. If you for any reason need a Minecraft skin, then without a doubt, 110% they will do some amazing work on it. But that's not all, because remember the last time I did some channel changes like this? Of course, it was the 3D debut, and let me tell you, we're finally bringing this channel up to date with it. Not only are both the Men's The Mailbox and the Mailbox Uncut channels getting a new logo, courtesy as always by our longtime Archon artist Coley, but I'd keep an eye out on videos over the next few months. Let's just say the sprites you're seeing now, the ones with the old outfit, they might look a little different to your eyes soon. Next up, some catalog changes. Over the last few months I've been going through a handful of my old videos, as before I hadn't touched my stuff from 2017 to 2019 in quite a while. However, I felt it was a good time to check back in with how I felt about my older work, seeing as I've been around for seven years now. And since I began, I've actually privated some of those older videos. Things like Intro V1, the Mario Party series, and maybe even more as I continue to search through them. Why? Well, if you cast your mind back to the five year anniversary video, I put the different years of my channel into different eras, and I still feel that way today. A lot of my old videos, well, cute to see a younger Mittens filming things on her phone, came from a time before I knew what I wanted to do with YouTube. Some of them, as lovely as they are, don't make me the happiest to still have up here, and now felt like a good time to go back and check on them before I continue. Now, rest assured, the videos are only being privated, not deleted. I'll be the first to defend them remaining in some form as I find history very important, especially my own. As it stands, I've only found a handful so far that didn't feel right to keep up, and I don't see many more going with them as I finish. But if you do notice any changes in my earlier stuff, don't worry, it is intentional and you can consider it some spring cleaning on a 7 year old passion project. And now, onto the videos. My first goal, and one of the catalysts for this entire shift, is to finish the Stray series. I want to make those final three episodes, show off the finale, and send it off with as much love as the others got. And when it's finished, well, I want to retire the playthroughs, at least for a little while. For as much fun as I had making the episodes, putting in jokes, and even seeing my work pay off in small little ways, there is a little bit of an issue with them. If I get behind in making the episodes, or I have other video ideas I want to make, it can stretch what should be an 8 week journey into 3 months, 4 months, or even 16. And beyond that, it can also delay me from playing new games on stream, as I usually wait to play something new once the previous series is finished. For example, the wait between Hollow Knight and Stray was two months, and the one after Stray is still ongoing. Now, don't get me wrong, every episode out there is one I gave my best effort on, and I wouldn't take a single one back for anything. But one of the biggest things I realized as I made this video was how much of last year was Hollow Knight. Not just that it was around for 16 months, but 15 out of the 25 videos I made in 2023 were part of it. It didn't just shape my 2023, it was my 2023, and as someone who likes to branch out and make a variety of videos, I want to change that. So what will I put in its place? Well, I wanted to try doing more scripted videos, kind of like these, ones I can plan out, 
gathered from multiple streams and tell a little bit of a bigger story than the episodic ones can provide. Things like Connection Point, where I can tell the journey of my year-long trading hall project, or the month-long storage system redesign. I want to give the V-Pumpkin Season 3 its long-awaited retrospective, or Sayonara Wild Hearts is placed on here with a cool thumbnail I've wanted to do for ages. This of course means I won't stop playing games, and in fact, it'll give me the room to play more than I ever have before. I'm looking forward to quite a few on my list I haven't yet been able to play, and eliminating the time needed for episodes is something I'm excited for, continuing old series in new ways, making standalone videos on games I enjoy, and bringing more of what I do onto here, the place I started all those years ago. And that's not all. I also want to do more speed paints, more time lapses of art I make while I talk and ramble through the process. I already started on this idea back in October, and making the second one just recently has shown me how much I enjoy sharing what I make out to everyone, to anyone who's willing to take that chance. And beyond that, I want to start up shorts again, albeit on a much smaller scale. Before, I was shooting for a video every other day, but with working on main videos, streaming, and my job over the weekend, it's not exactly something I can achieve right now. I plan to move to a once or twice a week schedule for them so that I can continue to make them and put them out while not overwhelming everything else. And that's it. An entire year of my life, my work, recapped, and all of the changes I've been making or will make in the next few months? They're all here too. And yet, at the end of it all, beyond any one thing, I feel something I used to miss. Hope. Call me a little crazy, but in the midst of 2023 and the start of 2024, squeezed between all the responsibilities and needs of the world, I found myself sitting down, one day at a time, and making a memory. Maybe it was editing the next episode, laughing at a dumb joke I put in there because my brain runs purely on memes and long explanations. Or maybe it was a stream, the quiet moments where I spaced out, or the funny ones where Chat and I got into deep conversations about games, people, or the future. Or maybe, just maybe, it was music, jamming out with my friends as we played Minecraft together, or by myself as I drew the next drawing with Willow in it. When I think back on it, I spent the year doing what I do best making memories, and along the way I made more than I know what to do with. I made so many friends I hold dear, did so many things I never thought I could, and with all of it, as time went on, I couldn't help but feel hope again. So now I think to myself, and wonder, where will my future take me? Will I achieve all the plans I set out to do, or make more friends I never would have imagined? Will I get to change a few lives and tell stories that I hold dear to my heart? Or will I be shown even stronger hurdles, even bigger setbacks to overcome? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. But you, watching this, maybe you do. Maybe as we look back on the past to find inspiration, we'll stop here, maybe just for a moment, and think about what followed. We'll sit here for a time, look at the light in the sky, take a breath, and feel like we're okay. But for those of us here and now, what do we do? Well, we'll sit and ponder think about what lies ahead, and know that one day, we'll reach that day, and we won't know what it looks like until we get there. So for now, consider this a shot in the dark. We can't know what the future holds just as much as we can't change the past we've been given. We follow our dreams, our hopes, our needs, whatever it takes to get to tomorrow, to find change. Change for a better future, change for a better world, and change for a better me. I want to know that as the weeks go on, and the seasons pass, that we make those changes, and make this place I love so dearly something I can be even prouder of. I dare to believe that there is a better future, but until then, let's enjoy what it took to get here, and dare to hope, dare to dream, that we made it. And with that, let's go out there. Let's open our eyes and make that dream a reality, one step at a time, because every big moment is full of a thousand small memories, and those are the ones I want to make. I have been your host, Mittens the Mailbox, and for all you've given me, it's been an honor to make it here with you. Thank you for seven years of my channel, and I will see you next time.